everyone, and welcome to the Silver Screen Conference. I'm your host, Digimon11. Today, I'm with here with Jova Hexion. Hey yo, hey yo. Shiroi. Hey. I can't think of a funny name for Pedro, so we'll just call him David Cage today. I'm. I guess I'm here again. And also joining us through mobile, Tia. What a horrible night to have occur, so. In case you missed him from the Ranger movie. Trust me, Trova, the audience knows. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, we're here for another Pokemon movie. And, and what's today's title, Jova? <clears throat> Pokemon and the Rise of Darkrai. Ooh. But what's the Japanese title, Dead? <clears throat> Pocket Monsters. Diamond and Pearl, the movie. Dialga vs. Palkia vs. Darkrai. Oh, God, what a run on. What a run on sentence that title is. Uh, to be fair, Dialga vs. Palkia vs. Darkrai actually does sound cool. Does it? Does it yes. really? And it is something that happens in the, in the movie. Rise of Darkrai doesn't really describe the events that happen in the movie, especially when it comes to the, the character in the title. Well, <laughs> technically, Darkrai does rise from you-know-what in the end, so... Between the two titles, I feel the Japanese one makes more sense, even if it's a bit more mouthful. You know what? I will give you that. That being said, Rise of Darkrai definitely sounds cool, my theory is this, they wanted Darkrai to be the new Mewtwo. Mmm, he's nowhere near as compelling as Mewtwo, I'll say that. <laughs> Essentially though, despite the negative hype Dwibs gave me about this movie, it was not as bad as I was expecting. I will say this though, it was a noticeable step down from the last movie, Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea. It's funny, Trevor, but to me it's the complete opposite. Wow, really? Honestly, I thought you were gonna dislike this movie more too. Again, as you men as yourself mentioned, all in due time. So wow, we all have we all have different opinions here. Interesting. It's so disgusting, I know, Jova. It is. Oh, wow. Sorry, Dad, hold on. Uh, so, <clears throat> well, uh, without further ado, <laughs> shall we handle the plot synopsis then? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say like, oh yeah, we have a new character, Don. Yeah, when, when and where are we? <laughs> Yeah, so um, we are now in Gen 4, when I believe Dawn is your favorite of the Pokemon companions, is she not, Dej? No, that's not that's one. My, I, I do like Dawn, she's not my favorite companion, that's Clement. No. Really? You can, yeah, you can, you can boo me. Honestly, I like, I was I like cartoon nerds. Honestly, I was expecting Dawn would be your favorite, given how much she seems to be your favorite of the Pokey girls. Isn't that more so the fan base in general, rather than Deji specifically? Yeah, that's yeah. Well, it's, it's, well, it's, if it's if it's not Dawn, it's either Serena or Misty. Okay, I know Dawn's definitely well liked. I don't know if she's like the most popular of the Pokey girls, though. She she actually is. She's one. She's up there. Anyway, so what exactly is going on in this movie, Jova? Um, right. So we start this movie off by literally giving a cameo to all the legendaries and mythical types on the previous movies. We've got Mew. We've got the birds. We've got Mewtwo. We've got Jirachi. We've got Groundon, the real one this time. We've even got Kyogre, who for once is not fighting Groundon. How oh, damn he! Still can't <laughs> pronounce legendary folks. I, 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 I don't. I don't think. I don't find. I find it uh, interesting how we're ten movies into this thing, and yet they're still having the. This is the world of Pokemon, and this is what it's all about. Montage at the well, beginning. Uh, <clears throat> well, actually, you know, you know, to quote Stan Lee, every comic is somebody's first. So this is probably someone's first Pokemon movie. I mean, to give him, yeah, to give him credit, Pedro. It's not like these movies are numbered even, and. Honestly, Pokemon is kind of a series where you can pretty much drop in on just about any game, so I don't see why the movies can't be like that either. Okay. <laughs> that being said, though, 
I kind of feel a bit sorry for Raiko, seeing as how he gets left out of the elemental dogs trio. Like, yeah, Entei even, and... and... Cool even Ho Ho gets a small cameo at the very end, uh, like in a blink and miss moment. Uh. Like, I'm, I mean, and I get it, Raiko technically wasn't the main star of any of the movies, because, yeah, Legend of Thunder doesn't count, but even still, I feel like at the very least, they could have had him show up with his bros, but nope, like, hell, even Unknown got in over him. Um, but yeah, no, the Legendaries are there, Deoxys is there, Rayquaza is there, it's all good and cool. When Rayquaza shows up, then Raiko saw tell something along the line of uh, um, each Pokemon's loves to express themselves in different ways. Cut to Rayquaza hyper-beaming the shit out of everything. <laughs> well, let's be honest, Tio. That's perfectly in character for Rayquaza. I love it. That's a very love... valid way for them to express themselves. But what I love about this intro is because it, that it set up ideally what the tone of Gen 4 is when it comes to the Legendaries, because so far, the Legendaries have always been, mostly been representation of the elements of nature or potentially like an alien being of some like but gen 4 doesn't fuck around these are technically gods that we have to deal with and the narrator makes a good idea on what we should expect right a bit of backstory regarding gen 4 here gen 4 is considered by many fans to be the black sheep of the franchise i personally do not agree with that I think Gen 4 is just as fine. I do, however, notice that Gen 4 does have a lot of noticeable differences from other Gens here. As Teal mentioned, one thing this movie sets you up for is the overall tone of Gen 4. Okay, now, before Gen 4, a lot of the darker elements of Pokemon were mainly just, you know, creepypasta stuff or people thinking outside the box about, oh, a Pokemon could really do this or that when you think about it, and that's messed up. Gen 4 was the generation that kind of went, hey, what if we actually did make some of that stuff canon? Or better yet, show just how messed up the world of Pokemon really can be. Because, again, this is the part where we would get some really messed up stuff like literal ghosts in haunted houses, demonic Pokemon, and not to mention the flipping devil himself. And again, I don't exaggerate. We meet God and the Devil, but we're not going to talk about them just yet. Now, this movie is about two of God's uh, very dysfunctional... Children, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, let's call them kids. As the movie opens up with Palkia and Dialga, what else? Duking it out. Okay, let me put it like this. If you thought Groundon and Kyogre didn't get along, well, Gen 4 went, hold my beer, because... Uh, Palkia and Dialga are that on steroids. Like, Christ, I think Rayquaza would have his hands full 24-7 dealing with these two. That said, there is a very good reason for why they fight, as we hear a legend going on in the distance about how two things that should not coexist will kind of cause a lot of havoc, mayhem, and destruction if they are brought together. So, yeah, not exactly a good thing. Sure would be a shame if that happened to our world. Worth noting, though, is that uh, uh, during these initial fight, aside from a bunch of unknown flying, Dialga seems to have a slight upper advantage because Palkia's uh, uh, shoulder pad creaks slightly. It's not important now, but it will be later. Yes. So we cut back to this guy with glasses who seems to be reading the legend. As for what his name is, we'll get back to that later. Because now it's time to show off our new Pokemon trio of Ash, Brock, and newcomer Pokegirl Dawn. As they approach a town... This From one is called... Kind of. Yeah. Whoops. Thankfully, a nice girl is shows up in a weather balloon to give him a ride here. Her name is Alice. She'll be important later, needless to say. <laughs> D debatably, but I'll get into it. <laughs> yeah, Basically, yeah, I, the like I like Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, the reason that Ash and company have come to this town, which is Alamo's town, is for a Pokemon contest. Ergo, the thing that Dawn kind of excels in, essentially. Which, funny thing, we don't actually get to see that Pokemon contest go on until during the credits, funnily yeah, enough. Apparently in the original airing of Cartoon Network as reported on Bulbapedia, that wasn't even present in the credits. So. Yeah. 
Regardless, though, so our heroes get airlifted into the town. Now, this is one thing I took notice of. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the animation is a bit weaker in this zone compared to the previous one. Something about it seems a bit downgraded, honestly. Like, it doesn't feel as crisp and full of fidelity like the previous ones did. I'm not sure on that, Jorah, but I can tell you instead the one thing that this movie has better over the previous one is the CGI. It's not as, it's not immediate as at the beginning of the movie, but uh, just to set things up so I don't have to repeat it constantly. Um, it's present in much less quantity and it's more elegantly presented rather than being in your face and having a lot of low polygonal stuff that are just a sore in the eye. Regardless, though, we're in Alma's Town, and we start off with, what else? A few Pokemon battles here, with these three trainers who go unnamed in the movie themselves. But if you're curious, their names are Allegro, the woman with the Infernape, Kai, the guy with the, uh, with the Empoleon, and then there's also Mari... Who has the grass type starter? Like, I mean, seriously, these guys are like, I guess, supposed to be an advertisement for what the starters would look like fully evolved. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. because, because Oscarlop never evolved, and you want to know why? Because it wanted to prove it could do it without. No, 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 no. The behind the scenes reason is they thought its evolution was up. Really? Yes. Also, not, I sure, mean... not sure how much of a good advertising it is, because these evol evolve form get their answers kicked in the montage. Well, uh, well, well totally technically, we, technically, I don't think we ever truly see the end of those conflicts, which is odd for a Pokemon movie. Usually we do. And then after that, we get... Well, there's no other way to put it. A filler scene of just the Pokemon playing around in the garden. Yeah, I, I got severe flashbacks of uh, um, the first Pikachu short because there's a lot of stuff yeah. that. Uh, there's the Pokemon Power Cannon for almost five minutes straight, so, and then an accident causes a, a small infight in the, with that. But to, to, to mention how they got there, um, the Ash and the others noticed uh, this particular garden. And if I recall correctly, someone, if, if, if not Ali, I think Alice herself told them that it's a garden made for Pokemon, for all type of Pokemon, so we decided to let them be their own out. So there's that. Alice, as it turns out, has been playing in this garden since she was a kid. Again, remember that for later. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Team Rocket are once again spying in on the company. However, but, yeah. they, they literally get blasted off at the start of the movie. Quite possibly a new record by a Drift uh, Blim and two Drift Loons. Mm -hmm. How I guess they figured that they're not young enough to kidnap. Although, to be fair, Jesse provoked them. So... True. Yeah, no, they they had it coming, as even James and Meowth point out. It's because Team Rocket are becoming more and more insignificant in these movies. Mind <laughs> you, I don't think it's apparent right now at the start of a movie, but it will be at a certain point where it's worth mentioning, so let's continue. Anyway, but yeah, so we get a bit of a filler scene, I'm it. I kind of rolled my eyes at how filorous that scene felt. Yeah. Until we got another cliche coming down the line, which comes up when a Gallade comes to, well, signal Alice or something here. That's a, that's another yes. thing that's important for the movie. The infighting gets interrupted when Alice pulls out a, gr a leaf, a grass leaf. Oh, right, uh, that. I almost forgot about on the that. leaf and actually sings a tune with it. I know that it sounds very odd, but it is possible to produce a decent sound with particular leaves if you're skilled with that kind of thing. Granted, not to the level that the movie is showing, it is more of a magical kind of thing, but it is, it, there is some root in reality with this. The I that will that say... Is, what you're saying is, it's a skill issue. Definitely. Um, <laughs> the, the important I... point is that this particular melody tranquilizes all of the Pokémon. Yeah, um, as you may have guessed, that melody will be the main theme of this movie. And I'll be honest, as far as main melodies go, it's fine, but it doesn't really feel memorable. Regardless, though, after that, they go to check up on some wrecked pillars, 
To which Pokemon Gaston comes out. I know yeah, his he's, name he's, is he's, Alberto. He's Vitor Gaston. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. This, this is something that I was telling Pedro and Dwibs. Like, do you like Beauty and the Beast? And they were saying, I don't get Beauty and the Beast vibes from this. Look, look at him. Literally. So, no, 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 so no. Uh, it, it, this is literally Beauty and the Beast Pokemon edition. I don't know. Like, so he's a, so he's an, uh, so he's an egotistical jerk who wants to marry this. Yeah. But there's been plenty of those characters in media. Oh, yeah, Pedro, in the Pedro, wait, 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 wait. This, Hold there's on. also a Pokemon that the entire town hates, and she's the only one that's trying to prove that he that he's innocent. Of power in the city, and everyone in the city loves him, except yeah. the, the important character. No, not to mention the fact that there's literally a scene where he leads the entire town to kill the beast. Exactly. I know they don't technically say it, but no, like, holy cow, I really do get the feeling someone at the Pokemon Company saw Beauty and the Beast. The unfortunate thing about this is that it kind of makes the story pretty predictable. Granted, I was kind of able to tell what was really going on the minute that Alice points out a certain detail, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Basically, Al Baron Alberto claims that this is the work of Darkrai, a Pokemon that even other Pokemon don't want to be around. Why? Because being around him will, in fact, give you nightmares. And right as soon as Alberto makes the accusation, um, there's a movement in a bush, so what Alber Alberto does, he assumes, assumes it's dark, right? You know, freezes Leaky Leaky, that's his signature Pokemon, by the way, and immediately fires a hyper beam in that direction. Oh my god. Again, I, for I forgot about that scene, too. Like, I don't know what it is about this movie, but I tend to think of this movie in chunks, and, well, I guess technically that bit is important because this reveals... Our other main male protagonist newcomer, Tonio. Hey, <laughs> and I'm oh, right, goody! Now I can talk about one of those cliches I was not a fan of. Basically, Alberto, being a jock, is pretty much a bully to Tonio. You know, despite the fact that he literally hyperbeamed Tonio. That said, here's one thing I take notice of: Tonio literally took a hyperbeam to the face. Normally, that is a move that can absolutely devastate Pokemon, but Tonio's just comedically hurt and shakes it off. So this leads me to wonder, are humans just made of sterner stuff than Pokemon? Can we as humans actually fight Pokemon on our own? Was the Pokemon Ranger Temple of the Sea movie truly a sign that really humanity will evolve beyond using Pokemon and several things themselves? In which case, Tio, go 1v1 Rayquaza and tell me how that goes to see if my fury is right. Can I talk about uh, how Alberto is a very uncomfortable character to watch? Because he is guest on in that regard. No, 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 not, not that. Not, not like that would be fine. I, uh, the, my problem is is the way he behaves, where uh, he's really, really forcing himself on, uh, you know, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Alice. Yeah, uh, yeah and like um, guest on. That's the point. Okay, I, I get that, but like I don't know. The, uh, uh, what really bothers me that later. Later, when he becomes Licky Licky, he's literally licking Jesse's face without her permission and everything, and it's just like, uh... uh the... well, that's more of a comedic thing because she keeps yeah, screwing up his name. That's the thing. I'm not entirely certain that should be played as a joke, but whatever. I remember, Jesse had a Licky tongue in the past uh, that did that. Uh, I know, but this is an actual is human. That they were referencing? Yeah, that got turned into a Pokemon, and now he's getting his, po now he's getting his Pokemon abilities. Again, that's more for later, we'll continue, Joe. Uh, that being said, though, <laughs> this leads into a cliche that I'm not a fan of, because, yeah, Alice clearly brushes him off, and in doing so, clings on to Tonio, claiming that she's the one she loves, because he saved her life prior. Tonio turns out to be absolutely clueless of this, thinking that it's just and a he, joke. He felt kind of uncomfortable for the situation. That being said, we're really doing the stupid anime cliche of the boy who doesn't get that a girl is obviously in love with him. <laughs> uh. yeah, that, that's the vibe you got? I thought he was just nervous to admit it. Is that even an anime? I thought it was just a media cliche in general. Yeah, I think it's yeah. a more cool. I, the most common media you can see this is Archie comics. Uh, like, 
I feel like Archie does know, honestly. Yeah, he's, our, our, he's, look, he's just our, terrible Archie, at picking. Archie is an idiot, but even he knows about like. But uh, but yeah. Regardless, though, yeah, we got that whole dynamic here. Alice loves Tonio. Antonio will eventually need to reciprocate those ceilings. But first things first, we gotta deal with Darkrai, who does show up at this point and ominously says few words, but he can talk all the same. Yeah, he can talk somehow. Honestly, I'm not too bugged by it. My only issue is just that he barely speaks. Like, he doesn't speak eloquently, not even in full sentences, just in few words. Like, yeah. I'm wondering, Sorry, does he have a... He's a mythical Pokemon. It's interesting you say... They're the same... It, it, it's interesting you say that, Joe, because Shiroi and I even discussed a major problem that we both have regarding Darkrai speaking, but we'll get to it. Again, my issue is just that they can't seem to decide if they want to have him be like, he's learning, or he does know. But anyway, for this, okay, granted, my real theory is that the only reason they don't have him speak in clear sentences is the fact that the plot probably would have been solved much quicker well, if there you he go. could speak in full sentences to actually explain what's going on here. Well, there you go, Joe. You figured it out. And as you might remember, that's one of Shiro's usual pet peeves regarding media. So Again, I wouldn't mind if they at least explained if he's, like, learning to talk or can't properly communicate. And granted, maybe we're supposed to infer that... I don't know, though. I feel like it could have been done better. What Darkrai says is, Go away. So, of course, Alberto, being the ever so genius that he is, <laughs> attacks him with Licky Licky. Which, okay, I'll be honest, I'll give Alberto credit. I was expecting he'd go with just some Chad Rad cool Pokemon. But no, he goes with a Licky Licky, which I don't think it, um, generally fits it, it, his it, disposition, but you know what? Finally, I'll give him credit. Japanese, Jovan, because in uh, Japanese it's called Baron Dero, Baron Ubero, which is a pun also on Liki Liki's Japanese name. Uh, okay, that's good. And you know what? I'll give him credit. He's not an asshole trainer. Like, he seems to treat Liki Liki relatively fine. Like, so he's not a complete one dimensional a hole. That being said. Yeah, real dumb move to just attack Darkrai here. Although, I'll give Licky Licky credit, it does manage to dodge Darkrai's counterattack. Problem! Ash ends up getting hit by yep. the legendary. Like, you know, I'm starting to notice a pattern with Ash kind of getting attacked by legendaries either on purpose or by accident. Like, holy cow. And this ends up with Ash falling into a deep, dark slumber. One of which really, really causes Pikachu to be distressed for him. I also want to say that during the Nightmare sequence, the CGI it uses its best because it's supposed to be a surreal, you know, scary moment. And as such, we get to see stuff like the ground becoming this, this swirling, you know, whirlpool. And then a silhouette of what is clearly is Palkia literally staring Ash in the face, and it's so frightening. Like, In fact, it literally takes Pikachu shocking Ash to bring him back to the land of the living. That, that Although, yeah. and here's where we come to a revelation. It seems that Pokemon centers actually will treat humans. Because I Ash mean, wakes they, up they, in they, the Pokemon they, center. They've established that from time to time. Well, the, well, Jova, as far as I'm aware, so far we have only seen one human hospital in this anime. So... <laughs> anyway... So yeah, Ash wakes up and he's told that what he suffered were the effects of Darkrai. And the reason that people fear Darkrai is that, yeah, Darkrai can have a tendency to give them overwhelming nightmares. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, uh, make, again, make even Pokemon afraid to be around the guy. Nobody likes or loves him. Well, except for Alice and... Tonio to a lesser extent, but that's to be explained later. But hey, you know, that happened. I love the scene that comes afterwards, where Ash is clearly worried, and Dawn goes, is something the matter, Ash? And Ash is like, nah, I'm fine. I'm like, what do you guys think? You know, the guy who literally just got <laughs> affected by Darkrai might have some issues going on here. I get the feeling at this point they're just kind of rolling with the punches because, well, if he, if if he has if he's not dead by this point, nothing can kill this guy. 
Now, one thing that we didn't mention that has been going on here is that when the team first came in, they felt what appeared to be weird wrists through the air here and there. But since it seemed to die down afterwards, they thought it would be fine. I bring that up because we're going to go to the guy who's been sort of studying this stuff, Tonio, who the group finds shockingly passed out. However, it turns out he literally just fell asleep. Now, me personally, I thought this was going to be foreshadowing to show that, oh, he and uh, Darkrai have some link and Darkrai made him go to sleep. Yeah, no, he literally just fell asleep. That's it. Speaking and then Alice Dark drops him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you shouldn't be sleeping on the floor. Even though she was clearly worried for him. Now, here's one thing, though. Going back to one thing that I am a bit iffy on with this movie here. I feel like the movie definitely wants it to be a big twist when we find out the truth behind Darkrai. That being said, I feel like the movie kind of showed its hand a little too obviously. The minute Alice says, well, when you think about it, Darkrai only attacked because Alberto struck first. And I'm like, gee, I wonder what the twist is going to be with the ever so popular Darkrai. Hmm. Which is a bit odd, because as far as I know, Darkrai, even in the game, is, a, is mostly depicted in a negative light as just, you know, someone you should just watch out for. Even in recently in Pokemon Masters EX, uh, there was a themed event where Cyrus got one and things got fucked up very fast. It makes me wonder if initially they... Uh, I wonder if this is what the original creators had in mind for Darkrai, but, you know, it's just stuff got lost in the process and like they wanted to make these movies to clear the record or again maybe they were just trying to subvert our expectations with dark Rye. again i think the issue is that the movie kind of telegraphs it a little too much and who knows maybe it's not meant to be a big surprise but you know enough time happens before the big reveal comes to the point where i do get the feeling they wanted it to be a surprise Anyway, though, uh, the heroes come to the space-time towers. These two gigantic large towers that make you consider if the creator was compensating for something. Especially given the fact that he put the main mechanism at the very top of this giant we, set of stairs! Yeah, we know other way to go up unless you have, uh, like, a flying Pokémon or a flying vehicle. Uh, you know, given what happens later in the movie, and what we find out about oh, the guy who created it, I thought, my dude, you really could have at least put the main mechanism at the bottom. Regardless, though, Don wants to try out one of the tunes here, because it turns out, in addition to being a giant clock tower, this one also is sort of a giant music box. Yeah. So they go to the top of the tower, poor Ash has to walk the entire way. I love the he... expression he makes at the very end. <laughs> yeah, like, holy cow, the anime expressions are the best really the going all out. Right in the middle, he discovers that the others ditched the stairs and took the flying, the flying balloon and they go up without him. And he doesn't even have the courtesy to let Pikachu join them because he has a Staravia at this point and he could use it to have Pikachu let them join him. And so at least Pikachu doesn't have to do the stairs. But no, the fucker drags, he, drags his rodent around on the okay, stairs. Okay, to be fair, to be fair to you, I don't think Pikachu would want to abandon Ash to do that on his own. Yes, he would. <laughs> Whatever. Come on, guys, they're a true altruistic friendship of a true altruistic bond. Except, uh, 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 real, but... you, you say that, you say that, and then there's that episode from Journeys that sucks major balls. It's no Pika user. Gone. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, after painstakingly making it to the top of the tower, they finally get to show off the mechanism here, which essentially involves inserting these giant dials into slots which plays different tunes uh, all around again overall a cool mechanism created by an architect called Goaty. i'll be honest when we when i first saw the movie i honestly thought tonia was gonna be Goaty, but nope turns out uh the Goaty is actually an ancestor of alice's uh, well if i can't correctly it was like 
the, the great grandfather because there's a photo of Bohim and uh, Alice's grandmother as a child. Um, okay, I, I, I forget if he was Alice's. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Her mentor. Okay, I forget if he was Alice's grandmother's father or grandfather. No, I'll look it up. The point is very talking. They, the point is that they know each other, and this is also one of the reason Alice knows how to operate this machine. She literally knows it by basically by her childhood. She was trained. Mm-hmm. And again, so the clock tower plays music, gets the people in town all set to go, our heroes come out of the tower, and then the three trainers from before challenge them to some more Pokemon matches. And I'm like, okay. Sure. <laughs> At least again, the like gets to do something. Uh, oh, yeah, also, no, no, no. Uh, also, I... uh, Gody is Tonio's great grandpa. Uh oh, huh. I don't recall that ever being mentioned in the movie. Honestly, I. Okay, so I'm wondering, him being Tonio's grandfather, is that like one of those word of God things that we learn outside of the movie itself? Sort of like how we only figure out the free trainers' names and stuff like the manga oh. or. Could Again, be I checked, and the, this particular relationship is not a, is not a thing that the Java is not bad either. And maybe that's kind of like supplementary material stuff here and there. I don't mm. know. Granted, I guess it's not too important a to detail. Regardless, though, the free trainers challenge them to more of a Pokemon duel. And again, I do feel like this movie has a noticeable amount of filler. And I don't inherently mind filler, but it's filler where I don't think we really need to have filler because, once again, we do get Pokemon duels, but those are once again interrupted when the space-time continuum literally starts to break. Yeah, remember those shifts from earlier? They're back again, and this time way worse. However, the town, led by Alberto, seems to be blaming Darkrai for it. Uh, to which point... Uh, most people are like, well, it makes sense it must be Darkrai. This is not helped by the fact that when they corner Darkrai, uh, also with Alberto, who is now being followed by Team Rocket, yeah. who pass themselves off as a television reporting trio here and there, which I guess technically does give them more to do in this movie. Again, uh, the payoff is later for that. Yeah, so Darkrai shows up, and once again yells to go away. Now, so Ash and Pikachu confront him along with some other Pokemon. And okay, knowing what the twist actually is, I have to wonder why Darkrai did this. He shoots Dark Void at all these different Pokemon, which makes them go to sleep. Again, when we actually figure out what he was trying to do with that move, I really have to wonder, my dude, why were you aiming there? For now, though, Ash, Pikachu, and by extension Alberto and Team Rocket, chase after Darkrai into an alleyway. Darkrai then hits Licky Licky. And, oh boy, this is where things get trippy. Uh, Alberto gets turned into a Licky Licky, too. It's also As a result of Licky Licky getting enveloped by Dark Void. It's worth mentioning that uh, uh, just a bit before that, uh, the trainers started noticing some apparition of Pokemon floating around aimlessly without a clue, um, in a, a glow, glowing pink, uh, and uh, they were the po some of the Pokemon that were hit uh, with Dark Ray's attack. Um, and this is connected to what's gonna happen later. The, one of the reasons also why the Kiriki gets hit is because there's a distraction of this kind. But yeah, Alberto morphs into Likiliki and it's kind of disturbing. Not just that, like, uh, my, yeah. my, not just that. Plot-wise, there's no real reason for this to happen. Like, I, I, I don't mean why it happens, I mean... Do give a reason? Plot-wise, technically. Wait, when you say plot-wise, you mean like? I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I don't, no, I don't, I don't mean like. There's, I don't mean. It may, like, I understand why he transforms into Licky Licky, even though the reasoning I still find it a flimsy. My problem is that thematic, in purposes of the narrative itself, there's no real reason to turn him into a Licky Licky. You just do it because I guess it's funny. 
Regardless, my take is that's his karma for being a creep and he has to learn humility as a regard of it. I'm not going to act like it's highbrow or anything. It's not really, but it's a thing. And I'll give him credit, he actually does adapt to being a licky-licky with relatively fine enough pacing to the point where he can even do the moves himself here. Oh, I mean, nah. technically he, he already knew those because, you know, that was his Pokemon also. Yeah, but it's the fact that he can do it on his own. Like, Perfectly I mean... Well, as... well, well we don't think too much that. about that, okay? We don't... That... Oh, no, 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 it's, it's just... I'm like, actually yeah, fine with that. He, 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 he has fast, like, I'm used to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like that episode <laughs> where Ash gets turned into a Pikachu at the end. It also takes a bit be, 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 yeah. before that happens, uh, especially because, uh, again, if I recall correctly, one of the scenes after, because Dark Ray basically gets away again. Um, so but he does Dark say Ray one is... more thing to Ash. He says, no, I stay. When Ash tells him he's the one going away, right. that's so... probably meant to be foreshadowing. But, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> The thing about this movie I noticed is like, well, it is either way too blatant with its foreshadowing, or it's way too vague with its foreshadowing. There's like no in-between, honestly, with the foreshadowing in this movie. Anyway, back at the Pokemon Center, a ton of Pokemon have passed out and fainted. Well, okay, not so much fainted, they're stuck in a deep sleep. However, Brock feels like he's seeing hallucinations, but under which Nurse Joy confirms it's not the case because she can see them too. The images of Pokemon floating about here and there. Now, why is all this happening, and why has Alberto turned into a Licky Licky? Well, this is apparently because the dream world is merging with the real world here and there. I, Pokemon mainly are having these bad dreams about being chased around by something, hence the ghost Pokemon we're seeing... And Licky Licky apparently dreamed about becoming Alberto, which is why Alberto turned into a Licky Licky. Uh... The only case of this app. Yeah, and not only that, I don't feel like the movie really does much with the whole dreams merging with reality thing. No. Granted, maybe that was supposed to be about Palkia screwing things up, because, yeah, it turns out that yeah. the main reason this is all happening is because of Palkia, but... Remember, the, the pink glowing is supposed to be an indication. The, the, the primary reason why Palkia and the Aga are fighting is actually properly explained verbally in... In a to, later movie. In a later movie, which makes this a frustrating experience for a newcomer, because it just feels like you're just watching these two Pokemon fight, and it's the whole reason this movie is happening, and yet they don't explain why this is even happening to begin with. So it just feels okay. like... Go on. Getting a bit ahead of things, Dej, was it always planned that this would be the start of a trilogy, or was it yes. just something that... Okay, okay, okay. That... Um, I guess maybe they did have that plan in mind here. That said, Pedro does have a point that if you're a newcomer to Pokemon, this might leave you a little too confused. And even if you're used to Pokemon movies, this is going to be a completely different experience with... Well, See, technically I've heard of a story. That being said, to give this movie credit, I do feel like it's relatively self-contained enough. Even though, I'll admit, even without knowing that this is a trilogy, the way the movie ended literally made me feel like, huh. That was abrupt. I get the feeling this is supposed to lead into something. See, see the thing. See the thing about uh, the. See, it's not even a matter of. Uh, let's see how about this. See, they have Tony, who spends most of this movie explaining what's uh, what's going on. Why not have him? Like you could have easily written in a small little plot point where Tonyo discovers through his research. Oh, uh, I get the feeling they might be fighting because insert reason here that I won't say for now. As far as you can tell, without knowledge of the of the next two movies, these two are fighting just because we need conflict. I'll admit, at first I thought at the start of the movie that, oh, this is a fight that's been going on for ages and whatnot, but then the movie later clarifies that, no, apparently nope. this is something that happened relatively recently. Yes. Now, I will say this, I cannot judge yet how well-crafted this trilogy is yet. I haven't seen the other two movies. What I can say about this movie in regards to the whole thing, though, is that, oh my god, knowing that this is a trilogy makes things make a lot more sense, because there is definitely... Okay, it feels like this movie is simultaneously trying to explain things, but 
not explain too much because we want to keep you guessing. Like, okay, going back to the context of when this was released, did they at least let the public know that this was going to be a trilogy, Dej? I don't know. I would hope so, because I guess at least people would know what mindset to go in with. Now, whether or not it's ethical to go in with this literally expecting a trilogy, that's another talk to be had. Again, I'll give this movie credit. I don't think it hinges entirely on being a part of a trilogy, since for the most part, the conflict right there and then will be solved and taken mm -hmm. care of. Uh, without spoiling anything, don't worry, I can say this without spoiling anything. I, as someone who has recently seen the entire trilogy, I can tell you the connections between three movies are... Aside from the fact that Palka and Yaga are in all three movies, the connections between movies are very, very thin. <laughs> there, this doesn't even have much of a. There's not really that much of a reason for this to be a trilogy, if you ask me. But we can get into it later. Go also, on. apparently, I guessed the twist from the third movie immediately. Yeah, she. Yeah, she. she the movie. Well, well, okay, okay, okay. okay. To be fair, she when they were. Oh, how did you guess that? Well, basically, because it's not that hard, actually. Yeah. Well, well, well. To be fair, to be fair, she right. They don't pose the explanation in the third movie as a twist. It's just more like an explanation than anything. But to be, but yeah, at the same time, Shiro okay. brings up a good point that yeah, when you think about it, and if you think about a certain other Pokemon movie, it's not hard to think what the reasoning is. But go on, Jova. Okay, so back to this. This is where we can again go Beauty and the Beast mode, where Alberto pretty much leads everyone on a crusade to kill Darkrai. This is after they realize that Darkrai seems to have put up a weird force field. One where it's a fog. You try running into the fog to escape the town, yeah. you're mysteriously led right back to the town. Pedro, I don't know about you, but the shot of the fog and everything, the bridge and everything, I started to get Evil Souls flashback from that. I, I, I said Silent Hill. Yeah, I also thought Silent Hill. But yeah, that works too. I was honestly thinking Silent Hill as well, but Demon's Demon Souls works too. I guess it would be more boletaria to me. <laughs> Regardless, though, I love how pretty much everyone's on board with killing Darkrai. Even Ash and Dawn are on board with it. No, it, 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 it kind of makes you wonder, wait, our, our, our brave and noble protagonists <laughs> are a bit too quick to jump to the idea of killing this Pokemon. <laughs> now, granted, Darkrai did not help his case by I literally attacking all the Pokemon. I guess the idea is also because Ash has suffered directly one of his nightmares, so he feels like some sort of, uh, you know, trauma, at least a slight trauma from it. And sure. it's they do seem to hint at that. You know, not liking Dark Ride the slightest until he gets definitive reason of not doing so. Yeah, yeah, you know, I will give Ash credit. He suffered Dark Ride's attack directly, which it's kind of implied that humans are not supposed to get that sort of thing, and. It is apparently very traumatic, so Ash I can get. Dawn, though. And again, again, okay. To be fair, Darkrai has not been doing a good job making a case for himself. There's technically a reason for that, but like I mentioned, if he just spoke in complete sentences, we wouldn't be to this point. Regardless, though, here's my thing, though. Hey, Tonio, Alice, they actually end up making a good case for why Darkrai may not be the bad guy. My question... Why didn't you say that before Alberto led the angry mob off to go attack him? Because then we wouldn't have a movie. Uh, yeah, so anyway, Tonio goes through some of the clues that we've been left here. For instance, about how there seemed to have been this weird shift around the times that Darkrai showed up. And also, he recalls how Darkrai saved Alice as a kid during that time when Alice thought that Tonio saved mm -hmm. her. So he knows Darkrai really can't be all that bad here. And here comes the big plot reveal. See, it turns out Darkrai apparently wasn't fighting the Pokemon directly. No, he was fighting to keep Palkia from entering into our dimension and wrecking stealth. Why? Because... Okay, do we consider Palkia the he or she of the duo? One thing to mention is that the, the English dub refers to Dark Ray with, uh, with the he pronoun, but uh, in Japan, since they normally don't have this kind of thing, they just stick to the fact that, uh, much like most of the other legendaries, not all of them, but most of the other legendaries, uh, both uh, Dark Ray, Palkia, and Dialga are gender. 
Yeah. Most fan dubs I see that have legendaries talk usually have Palkia be the female and Dialga be the male. It doesn't matter, Jova. Regardless, though, basically Darkrai was apparently trying to fight off Palkia, which is why he shouted, go away, and was firing blasts up in the sky occasionally. Here's where I bring up a problem here. Why was he shooting Dark Void at all the Pokemon who were clearly on the ground? And okay, maybe the ones that attacked him, fine, but no, he was attacking even Pokemon that weren't attacking him. Like, what was up with that that's, scene? In case you're wondering, that's not his only attack. He at least knows Dark Pulsar, as you will see later. Yeah, I get the feeling the writers uh, had the eventual reveal of, of, his, uh, of, reveal of his reasons and, and shit later uh, in the script and they only but they didn't change the movie to accommodate for it it's just it just feels so weird it it, it doesn't feel thought out that's the problem with the, the yeah. whole it doesn't feel thought out here's oh. my take on the scenario they the plan was always for dark Ride to be this hidden good guy but what they wanted to do was go about a similar process of mewtwo where at first the protagonists are fighting against him only to then side with him later on essentially Honestly, I feel like it just would have been better if we just had Darkrai be a good guy from the get-go. Well, like I said, they wanted Darkrai to be the new Mewtwo, you know, the cool, yeah. new, edgy, legendary uh, Pokemon. Yeah, I you're not sure if he's a good or bad guy, but then it turns out he was a good guy I can all see, along. I can see that as well. The, the execution is nowhere near as compelling, though, because I mean, because uh, like like the one, yeah, the no, one, the, the one major thing that worked in the first movie was Mewtwo's character arc. Um, I just, I just, you know, again, which is why I always kept wishing that they would just focus on that specifically instead of the no violence shit. Um, but yeah, well, no. If it, I guess if it warms you up, there's plenty of violence in this movie because Alberto and company attack Dark Rye. Now it doesn't knock him out, although uh, funnily enough, Alberto manages to put up a good fight in his licky licky. Form. But However, I was looking also that the Dark Ray basically pushes him away because I forgot if it's a case of that he grabs his front and pulls away. This prompts basically um, Alberto to fling off with Team Rocket, and that's the last we see basically here of Team Rocket for the rest of the movie. They make a voice to have you in the credits, and that's it. We technically do see them during the climax after having gotten out of the tree. I, I, sw I swear I didn't notice them. I did, but yeah, no, basically you. Alberto puts up a good fight <laughs> when he wraps uh, Darkrai around with his tongue, but no, Darkrai pulls him by the tongue, flings him, and Team Rocket off into a tree, but yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately Darkrai's kind of been weakened by the battle, which in turn finally allows Palkia to enter here. Turns out Palkia, as you'll recall from the start of the movie, got one of... Uh, her gems cracked, essentially, as Tio mentioned. So, Palkia is now here to try and heal, and since Palkia is the Pokemon all surrounding space, it'll use matter to heal, which is kind of bad news for us, seeing as how we're matter. However, it turns out that the destruction will be confined mainly to this town because Palkia warped the town in a bubble to a weird other dimension, essentially, where it will feed off of it. However, here's another problem. Dialga enters, and holy cow, Dialga is absolutely gunning for Palkia. Dialga, being the Pokemon god of time, yeah, well, let's just say makes an even bigger mess of things, and it's all Darkrai can do to try and get the two to stop, which they don't. Maybe we needed Ash to get in the middle of their blasts and go, to stop immediately, and then turn to stone like he did last time. Ah, jeez, not this again. <laughs> you say that, but we will have a parallel to the first movie later on in one of the finals. Yeah! We, Not just we that. Will. Honestly, I will argue there's even more parallels to, um, to the second movie, but I'll bring it up as we get to it. I, okay. It's time for us and company to have another talk with Darkrai, and here's where one of my frustrations with Darkrai come about here. So they basically, you know, apologize, realize they were wrong, and Darkrai doesn't really say much to them. 
Like, okay, yeah, it turns out Dark Ride mistakes Alice for her grandmother, Alicia, who played with him in the garden, you know, noticed he was hurt after duking it out with some Pokemon, and sung him the song on her, well, not so much sung, played him the song on the same leaf, like Alice does, essentially. This is what Goaty noticed, because it turns out in his journals, Goaty got something of a dream of premonition. I believe it was thanks to Darkrai, which foretold him of this future conflict here, which told him to leave a certain something to the town here. As for what that certain something is... They pulled an Ace yeah. Attorney case 1-2 and say, say, have you checked the be behind the photo? <laughs> they, they do, and it's like a complete manuscript of the song in, uh, in music format. Yep. So, what do we need, though? We need to use the giant mechanism that Goaty created. Which, okay, Goaty, I know you predicted a fierce battle. Here's a question. Why did you make the one thing that could save us literally at the top of those giant, long, ever-winding stairs without any other means to get up? Like, I mean, I don't, I don't think he figured that there would be Dialga and Palkia attacking. Yeah, he literally says he got a dream that showed him the future with this happening. Oh. So he technically did know. I think the idea was that the, the people were supposed to use it to while Palkia was still contained and Darkrai, you know, in good health. So that way they would have been able to repel him, you know. I have to wonder, that... Yes. In emergency situations like this, why doesn't anybody use Pokemon to fly up the stairs? Running up all those stairs seems like it would take way too much time for what you're doing. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because in the original trailer for this movie, you see Ash fly right on a Pidgeot. That scene isn't in the movie. Wait. Yeah, I wonder why they cut that. Mm. Oh my god. And in fact, we literally see that there are Pidgeots in this movie, too. I, f I think it's because they were afraid that people were like, uh, wait, people might think that's Ash's Pidgeot. No, uh, I uh, can't remove no, it. No, no, no. I think the real reason was just they thought, oh crap, that would be kind of an easy fix to the whole dramatic climax of them climbing the tower here. But before we do that, Ash and company have a talk with Darkrai. And again, here's where my frustrations with Darkrai come about. Darkrai doesn't give a speech, he doesn't even truly show that he's made amends with them, he just grunts, and then goes back off to fight. Granted, maybe the idea was we're supposed to see the majesty of it without dialogue to tell us. Me personally, I just see it as Darkrai once again failing to communicate, which is kind of the reason we were in this problem. Like. You know, again, if Darkrai could speak a complete sentence, here's how the plot would have gone. No, wait, don't attack me, Alberto. Mm -hmm. It turns out that I actually know Alice's grandmother. Yeah, and well, I so, know so what, he didn't know that was Alice's grand. Well, the, I, he regardless, he Java's punch still stands, though. Like, but yeah. Here's my thing. Like, all he would have needed was to say a complete sentence to Alice uh, or Tonio. They probably would have been able to explain it to the town, and they're yeah. probably the closest things to authority aside from Alberto this town has anyway. Yeah, the and, like the town would even have a reason to doubt them. Yeah, the fact that he barely speaks in this movie also is counterproductive in, from a character writing standpoint, where because the 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 movie gives him little to no characterization, Darkrai is not particularly an inter a compelling character, even though he's this, at the center of this plot. You know, like, like, like Jonah was just saying how they're trying to make him the new Mewtwo. Mewtwo was actually a compelling character with a backstory. Darkrai is just... Uh... And here's the frustrating thing. He can actually talk in broken English, though. Like, not even in a foreign language. He can talk. Like, here's the thing. If they made it that he couldn't talk, I would not have as much an issue with it. In fact, then it would make more sense. But no, he can talk, so, my dude, get, learn some more? Again, take some vocabulary lessons, you sure probably had time to do that back with Alicia, and tell everyone what's going on. It's also the fact that, uh, uh, the, again, with Darkrai not being able to, to tell anything, it, 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 it clearly is a, a, an example of them doing that because they, real, they wrote themselves into a corner. So they just hope and pray and hope you don't notice this problem, basically. 
That said, though, on the plus side, Brock does get to do something when he helps escort villagers out to a safe zone, and he and several Pokemon even help Darkrai out of the water after, well, something that was foreshadowed by one of us happens, because while Ash and company are trying to make their way up the tower, it's warned by Tonio that just one or two more collisions from Dialga and Palkia will apparently destroy the dimension, which... Okay, I raise an eyebrow because originally the movie said we were trapped in our own pocket, which we are, so, but then they treat it like suddenly the whole world would be destroyed, even though technically we're not actually in our usual dimension because Palkia picked us up, so what the heck's going on, writers? I think it might have been a translation flub, but in a sense, possibly to our reality as in the place they were there at the moment. That might have been it. Regardless, though, it's time for a first Pokemon movie reference where Darkrai literally gets into the middle of Palkia and Dialga's attack, essentially. Creates uh, a I whole... Believe... Was it Roar of Time and spe Special Rent? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I don't recall. <laughs> um, it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so Darkrai gets caught in the middle of that. It manages to stall them for a bit. Unfortunately, he ends up collapsing and dropping into a pool from which Brock saves him. Like, I guess to give this movie credit, Brock got to do more than in the last movie. That's and I guess good. also to give this movie credit, they even let the companion help out in the climax as well. Though not before, due to one of the risks, Dawn literally gets knocked the heck out of the weather balloon that they're using to go I mean, back up because yeah, screw the stairs. Not just that. Uh, um, at first, I was actually happy that uh, you know Alice uh, was accompanying me. I was like, okay, she knows how to use the machines. She knows about the song. She's gonna be the the one the important one. She's connected to the story. She's the one important that's gonna save the day. But just as I was thinking that, the movie is like, nope. Let's separate Alice and Antonio from the others. So Ash and Don gets to save the day. Basically, Ash and Dawn end up getting knocked out of the balloon. Pikachu and company jump to the stairs with them, essentially using Ash's, uh... Yeah, yeah I'm Staravia. Which had to be used to rescue Piplup, who also was falling out of the balloon earlier, too. So, it's up to them and their Pokémon to reach up the stairs, while Tonio and uh, Alice, along with Chimchar, who Alice uses to fuel the hot air balloon, Crash land, essentially. Alberto, in a show of good faith, actually does try and rescue her with his Licky Licky, which he partially does, but of course it's Tonio who swoops in using his uh, Drift Limp. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm... Yeah, his Drift Limp to save her, effectively. She also thinks the Licky Licky thinking it's Alberto, even though Alberto has now turned back to his usual self because Darkrai's power was weakened around the time that Palkia crashed in. Know. Yeah, can I talk about uh, Tonyu and Alice for a moment? Uh, yes, the two lovebirds. Yeah, let's see, the thing is, yes, they have this thing where, oh, the, um, uh, Alice thinks Tonyu saved her, but then of course it's revealed that it was actually Darkrai who did. Okay, cool. Thing is, like, this revelation doesn't really have any, the importance that it should have, considering their focus on the flashbacks. Like, you think there would be, a, a, like, a heartfelt scene between Tonyo and Alice where they talk this through, you know, and, you know, they talk, you know, Tonyo finally expl I'm sorry, I never told you, you know, something along those lines, some, some kind of scene to actually properly... F because you have this idea of 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 these two who kind of like each other, but the reasons are a bit flimsy because of untold truths, and but they don't really go anywhere with this. Like they just have him save her, and there you go. I guess we're fine again. Like there's no actual meat to this plot thread at all. My guess is that this was to show that despite him not being the one who saved her back then, she still loves him, and then when he actually does save her for reals, it shows that <laughs> oh, he I get really that. was the hero that she fought him to be. Oh, I, I get granted, that. Granted... Sorry. Granted, I'm not gonna act like that is expertly shown or that it was the pinnacle of writing <laughs> because, uh, no, their romance is kind of flimsy. It's because I mean, it's not terrible writing. No, so. it's not. It's not that it's terrible. It's more so that it's empty because there, we never have a moment where the two characters actually talk 
things through and actually express their feelings in a way that feels again like uh, uh, let me try to think of a uh, look look uh, uh, how about this how about this like um in lucario and the mystery of mew the reason the the reason the the friendship between lucario and ash works is because the two care we have plenty of moments where the characters interact on a personal level the two characters alice and tonya never have a moment where they actually sit down and talk their rela okay so where do we stand are we friends are we are we dating like there's no actual character development in this thing it's just beats with no character development to tie the beats together anyway so yeah um that's happening and meanwhile brock is helping uh dark Rye out who then recovers and then is about to make a great sacrifice one more attack to try and stave off palki and dialga unfortunately the result sees him wither away never to be heard from again at least i don't feel so good <laughs> yes literally <laughs> like that is how yeah, it no. goes though actually yeah like and oh my god the movie definitely tugs at your heartstrings with that moment so anyway back to ash and company so i love this bout here and there where mm -hmm. okay so stuff is withering away fano style so get this miraculously there dash and don are able to use uh, some of their pokemon to literally freeze about of stairs from disappearing out of existence yeah, holy uh, cow uh, why not Sergio, to help me on this one uh, why does those badiri those ice beam it just does i'm guessing okay. she may have taught it because from pokemon because uh, or yeah, something basically no, I think Baneri can learn that move. It's just, you know, just Roma, you don't expect someone to teach it that move for obvious reasons. I, I think it knew um, I um, or Don Connor. Um, excuse me, Mr. Joa, but I have clearly taught oh, you that you oh. should teach Pokemon moves that they hate. Well, yes, Professor, but you're from Gen 2. This one's from Gen 4. Yeah, let's just say man. stuff gets wild in later <laughs> generations professor <laughs> urban Larry only knows free moves jesus christ no wonder she didn't want the grand festival ouch anyway uh, though uh so yeah they make their way up the tower unfortunately once again some of the stairs disappear and ash and dawn nearly fall to their doom Thankfully, their Pokemon help them out here and there, but this unfortunately separates them from the po from the Pokemon on the stairs. About that, like, um, I thought um, Dwebs actually pointed something that I didn't notice when I watched this movie with him. Dawn falls from the balloon, and she lands about the same height as Ash. And then when, but when Ash falls, he tick like he it hurts and it takes a while to recover but don like don apparently has bones made of steel because um, when, it, when it happened to her she's treated more as a comedic moment so no like, i i i i get that the characters but... just have a point though, and like, there you go <laughs> like here's something ash has a reaction to it but not don yeah don falls from the exact same height he does um like you'd think yeah, there would be they just wanted to have a he just wanted to have a comedy skate with uh, with Ash. I, but why not with Dawn as well, though? Like no, again, yeah. is she just made of steel? Is Dawn secretly a Pokemon as well? No, probably. Go on. I mean, it wouldn't be the. I mean, Dej, it wouldn't be the first time that a Pokemon companion turns into a Pokemon in reality. Maybe you can have a Beyblade V Four style plot twist uh, where it uh, turns. <gasps> Dawn is a robot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Getting Pokemon Heroes flashbacks to No, no, that's the, he said Beyblade V Force. Yep. Oh <laughs> that was a trip back then. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the the group all make their way up to the tower. They insert the dial into the centerpiece, which John figures must be the one that can fit the song. But unfortunately, due to, again, the Thanos effect going on, some of the mechanisms disappear and make it so that there's no power left. But it's okay, because we got Pokemon Jesus himself, Pikachu here, along with Maze Electrical Swirl Squirrel to help I out and charge the tower up. 
and it works. The song begins to play, and thankfully, Palkia and Dialga stop. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say about this. Like, with Kyogre and Groudon, all it takes is Rayquaza to go, hey, you two, knock it off. But which is interesting. You, which is interesting because when you learn the reason why they were fighting to begin with, it doesn't seem to add up a lot. But well, yeah, what I guess is Daddy I, doing at this point? Uh, I wonder. Like here's like here's the thing. At this point, though, these two arguably fight even more viciously than the Gen Three legendaries do. Yet all it takes is a song to play, and they're like, "Ha!" Huh, Not to know, mention, mindset us fighting is kind of stupid. And this is where I now bring it up. Okay. So let's think about this for a moment. We have this. We have this scenario where where uh, where le a couple of legendary Pokemon are fighting, and their fight is, of course, of epic proportions that is very damaging to the environment around them. Um, they the the key to uh, the key to stopping this is by going to to uh, by getting to to uh, MacGuffins, and by that I mean the discs that play the music, and using a specific song. To get them to stop fighting. Where have we seen this before? Uh, Power of one. So. Power of one. So yeah, when you. I feel like it's like this I said. It's a bit unintentionally taking notes from Power of One because remember that movie was started from a, an idiot who had no idea what he was doing and accidentally caused the end of the world. Okay. This one was okay. just. Wrong. This this happens to be at the wrong place, the wrong time. Dialga and Palkia were fighting and just accidentally wound up here. Oh yeah, the context is different, but said, the elements themselves are, are are still pretty much the same. But go on, Joe. Yeah, there's like, my character just... moments in this one, and they don't spend the entire movie on a fetch quest. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it, it's like saying Iron Man One is Doctor Strange is just Iron Man One with magic. Let me put it like this. I can agree that it probably wasn't intentional. That being said, it's kind of eerie how, again, Pokemon Ranger Temple of the Sea felt like a redemption for Pokemon Forever's plot in a lot of beats. This one, again, unintentional or not, it feels like it's trying to be a better version of Power of One. That said, there are some things that Power of One did better, that being the score. Now, again, I bring this up because the music actually is important to the plot here and there, mm -hmm. as it was in Power of One. The problem is that something about Power of One's is, was more powerful and recognizable. This one feels kind of like about a, oh yeah, we gotta put in this mystical song that'll later come back in the end credits as a vocal tune. Uh, um, get someone who can sound like James Horner or something, and yada yada yada, that's what they slapped in there. My real problem with this scene is another, like, uh, because it's not just the song. We see even the the over the instrument produces uh, these particular light effects, also that propagate the entire CD. You're telling me that in all those the decades of the existence of a mechanism, the song never came up even accidentally. Tony explains earlier in the movie that the songs get uh, rotated, get played on a rotation. So it was bound to happen before, you know, sooner or later. Okay, to be fair, we see that the whole dial for the special song was actually hidden in a puzzle, essentially, which Alice solves. Uh, and technically, it was in the center, which never plays because it doesn't have anything in it prior. So I guess yeah, that's so. the reason why it didn't play before. That said, though, again, the fact that... <sighs> So, here's one thing, though, regarding Goaty, though. So, Goaty had this dream of premonition here. Surely he could have told his family, hey, I kind of got this uh, vision from Darkrai. And granted, maybe he did, and the rest of the family died out, and that's why Tonio had to find it from his archives. All the same, though, was there... Okay, assuming Goaty was, like, the head of the town, we never really do figure out who's in charge of this town... Why didn't he make it more common odds that, hey, Darkrai might actually be on the up and up here. Maybe don't treat that guy like the devil. Uh, to answer your question, Jova, I think Alberto is supposed to be done like uh, the major as possible. He's, he has the title of Baron, after all. I guess, but 
the thing is, nobody really seems to respect him that much. Like, he more yeah. so has to rally people as opposed to use his actual authority, so... I don't know. It's similar to the other movies, Joe. It's just yet another town where there's no any type of police force. Okay, I think... In, oh, the thing is, in other towns, we at least got stuff like the Officer Jennies, at least, or whatnot. Like, we even saw Officer Jenny show up in the previous movie. But here, despite having a Nurse Joy, there are no Officer Jennies that I recall from this movie. The, the anyway, though, the song real, calms yeah. Palkia and Diago down. And then Ash and Dawn literally yell to Palkia to go, Hey, fix this. It gets better. Palkia is like the Japanese dub. Ash specifically insults Palkia, calling him an idiot. Yes. <laughs> wow. And I guess Palkia's feelings must have been really hurt because she just fixes things. Well, oh, fuck you then. Okay, fine. Hi. It's my physical appearance. You almost called us, you idiot. <laughs> Like, and Dialga's just like, eh, peace out. <laughs> like, I mean... Gee, it's like... A, I mean... Gee, it's like this movie amounted to very little more than pointless bickering or something. Like, again, even... De I'd say even Destiny Deox has handled the whole Legendary's coming go thing better. Like, at least there was a sense of presence when Rayquaza just finally called it quits. Like... He didn't just faff off. There was at least some fanfare to it and whatnot. Here it's just like, Dialg and Palkia have entered the chat. Dialg and Palkia have exited the chat. See you next time. But all is not entirely right. For despite the fact that things have been fixed, Darkrai is unfortunately Oh look, he's alive! Dead. <laughs> dead! I was about to lead up into that thing, just like uh, the scene guys, was. Guys, I'm right over here. <laughs> It's really? fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turns out Darkrai is okay. Guys, now, I okay, I'll admit okay. <laughs> And the movie just starts. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I'll say this. I was at least expecting that. I was expecting Darkrai would be fine, but I was expecting there'd be, like, an explanation, like, and I guess maybe we're supposed to infer that Palkia just revived him as well since he was one of the things devoured by her essence. Except, he was the only living thing we saw get devoured by her, so like, does that work for living things just that easily? I guess so, because there he is, and... Jova. Yeah, no, that's literally I, the end of the movie. You're getting the most important detail. Ash and Dawn cried at the idea of a dark tribe was dead. Not even Alice cried. Yeah, that's such a good well, point. See, I guess it's to show that Alice is toughened or something. Like, not my problem. Guys, guys, Darkrai died for our sins, and then he returned three seconds later. There you go. That's what happened. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, now, I guess another thing comes of this. Tonio and uh, Alice are officially in love, according to the end, so there's that. that Good for them. Yeah, that... That's the end of the movie. Cut yep. the credits. Yes, that is the yeah. end cut to credits. Like, I actually had to do a bit of a double take. Like, Say what you will about Pokemon movies, and okay, I'm talking mainly about the big theatrical ones here, not like the shorts or the mini-movies or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I don't think a Pokemon movie has ever ended that abruptly. Now, yeah, granted, yeah, I, was get... I was expecting Dark Rite to say, like, I will never be a memory, rolls credits. <laughs> I, you know, it felt like that. I mean, on the edge. Yep. <laughs> Now, granted, granted, we do get some scenes showing what happened after the movie, as is typical of Pokemon. Again, we see Team Rocket. I don't think this. I don't think Team Rocket in this movie gets even acknowledged by the protagonist that they're present. No. I like to imagine Ash and Company <laughs> saw through actor, their but... disguises, but just figured, eh, they're technically not hurting anyone at the moment. Mm-hmm. Anyway, though, Dawn finally gets to do the Pokemon contest, and which loses. she apparently loses to Allegra. And then she cries on the <laughs> off screen again. Oh, it's okay. She looks happy cheering Allegra on for her win. And, and, then, she, and yeah. then she cries off screen. This is part of her arc. Why I'm are you lie. obsessed with... Wait, are you telling me that she actually cries 
to the events of this movie in the anime series later on. No, no, no. She, whenever she lost the contest, she's always upset uh, until she met May, and then she got over it. Yeah, because May had it even worse. Um. Okay, we also see some scenes of Dark Roy still hanging around. I, I guess he'll protect the town. And, and uh, we'll Hash and Company go, and Ariana. yeah, that's it. With the final scene, I was very confused by the music because I guess they're sort of going for, oh no, he's really alive, guys, kind of thing. But it sounds very... Sinister. Um, intimid yeah, intimidating. It's like, why is this... Are we, it feels... What is this supposed to make me feel right now? It's, it's like I get the feeling that, you know, that's his theme. You know, I'll, I'll admit, I do like Still, Dark Roy's though. I think the idea is that his theme is at first supposed to give you dread, but as you figure out that he's a good guy, it has a double feeling where when you see him alive, now it feels more triumphant despite being a dark version of it. That's usually that, the problem when you try to make something as the boogeyman an actual hero. Hmm. Oh, 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 okay, look, I don't think it was inherently a bad idea because, again, it teaches us not to always judge based off of rumors or appearances initially. That being said, though, anyone who's used to the games will probably be going, wait, Darkrai's seriously the good guy? Like, uh, it's like some of the later games trying to make us believe that Colress is supposed to be now a good guy when I'm not buying in the slightest. <laughs> Oh, why? Why? Why, why, why do you think Chorus is not a good guy? He, ex he exudes mad scientist that tries to put up a, you know, a nice face every single second. And and then he, and then he realized what he was doing was wrong. Come on, don't you, don't you forgive war criminals? Did, did, did you learn anything from Lucimane? Dads, dads, dads. This isn't Steven Universe. Let's shut not. up. You brought it on yourself. Anyway, though. So yes, that's the movie. All right. Who? who what? The the Go Award, which is worst character. So uh, who wants to go first? I will. All right. Go on. Creepy McCreeperson. Dark Cry. No, he means no, she means, on over there. She means all back. Oh though. well, uh, again, like I mean, I guess you know, because Darkrai is originally shown off as to be like the creepy boogeyman, but no, I guess that probably. No, no I mean more. the actual creep. Yeah, the Fair reason enough. should be obvious, dude. No means no. <laughs> like, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Even I the Pokemon tried to bitch slap him over it. But, um, yeah, <laughs> it that's it. A lot when Brock is like, the, the last creep of the movie. Um, speaking, don't worry, Crow. speaking of, and I go also next. very quickly. Even if he, even if he wasn't a creep, he's just snooty rich person. Yeah. So that's yeah. Brock. Because because oh my god, he valid does nothing. Well, hey, hey. hey. Hey, he helps civilians to safety, and he helped Darkrai out of the pool after he what got knocked he out. What do you do? Okay. Right, go on. Uh, she already picked uh, Alberto, so I'll, I'll pick Darkrai, because Darkrai is a moron, and if this all could have been avoided, if Darkrai would have actually, you know, spoke up. Like I said, like, the, yeah. like as, far, as far as the movie, as far as the movie tells us, Darkrai can apparently talk with no apparent limitations. So why doesn't he do that? Because then the plot would be over sooner. Exactly. That's and that's uh that's one of the most classic examples of bad writing when you when you have to force the characters to be stupid for the plot to work. Go on. See, okay, you know what would have been better? If Darkrai couldn't talk, but he used his dream void to try to communicate, but nobody would understand it because they were too yeah. angry or oh, confused. That would make for some very interesting oh, scenes, uh, actually. They did oh my that. god, you just reminded me, Dez. They do actually state that apparently he was trying to tell Ash that when Ash got that dream of Palkia. Mm. So, to which point, I, and that said, I know the movie suggests that, but I just want to point out two things. One... He clearly hit Ash by accident because Licky Licky just got out of the way, so... If that was Darkrai's plan, that's some 4D chess we're playing here. And second, if he could do this with a human, why didn't he do this with humans more so before? 
Because Zaras is because the only human who gets afflicted directly. Yeah. It causes them pain and trauma as it is experienced by Ash later. So then, why does the movie insist that Darkrai was planning to tell Ash via that dream then? Yeah, it's one of those things where Darkrai could have just come to Ash, look, here's the gist of it. Blah, 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 this thing, this thing, this thing. And there you go. See? Wasn't hard. That it, it really is a case of it really is a case of the people who wrote this movie clearly didn't think things through. Alright then. I'll go next. Who's next? Easy. Team Rocket. <laughs> I, didn't I completely them. forgot about them. I can't. I don't think they do technically anything wrong, but this has got to be a new record in how little do they do in the movie, how little they interact mm -hmm. with Ash and the Hours, and how quickly they get forgotten by the movie. There's not even like a the, their four wall gag at the end like they usually do. They're just. If it wasn't for the credits, they would just disappear midway through. That's sad. Mm hmm. Java. I guess for me. I'll go with Dialgan Polkia. Yeah, the big legendaries of this movie. All they really do is fight, and they don't even have compelling... Well, okay, in the context of this movie, anyway, they don't really have a compelling reason to fight, and they literally just cause trouble for everyone until they literally yell that Jova, I'll after a song calms them down. Jova, I'll tell you this right now. The reason why they're fighting is not worth waiting for two more movies. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Goody. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, again, they're not necessarily terrible, but no, if I had to pick what's my least favorite characters... Probably Dialga they're not, Polkia. They don't have they here, don't have the nuance that other legendaries have had. That, that's because they're not characters. They're the writers look at Dialga and Palkia as a means to an end. Like we need some kind of thing to destroy shit to cause conflict. So let's put Dialga and Palkia fighting. There you go. Problem solved. It really does feel like one of those movies where yeah, there's this cool stuff, but. Not really a solid plot to contain it all. What well, connect it all? See the thing is, uh, see the thing is, even in Power of One, they bother to give a basic reason why the three legendary birds are fighting. Uh, like Zapdos even comes yeah. in. Zapdos comes in. He takes over Moltres Island. Why? Because he's a dick and he wants to take over. Uh, take over because what? Moltres are here. My island's mine now, bitches. It's a ba It's an incredibly <laughs> shallow motivation, but at least it's something. <laughs> It's kind also, of entertaining how petty oh, they were. Her, yeah. She disrupted the equilibrium by capturing one. Yeah, it's not it's no Shakespeare, but at the very least they bothered to give a basic reason why these birds are fighting. In in, in this movie, Doug and Paul are fighting because again, the writers saw these two characters as plot devices for a means to an end. That's all they are. Well, okay. Yeah, the movie goes no, there are two no, forces no, that should never be a bad thing. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, that's the Tracy Sketchum Awards out of the way. I said go. So... Oh, whatever. Next draw, next edge. Uh, the Mewtwo Award, best character. Who went last? All right, Joe, you go first. Hmm. I guess Ash. Boy, get stuff done. He does go through an arc of having to deal with the trauma of what Darkrai did to him, which is actually pretty interesting, I'll admit. He does come around full center, like... I guess for all the flaws this movie had, it's one of the better Ash arcs we've gotten out of these movies, yeah, surprisingly he enough. Yeah, superpower by the end. <laughs> okay, let's see. He, he can control Aura, he's coming to see, he saved he's Christmas. How about that time when he connected with his Greninja? Oh, wait. Sorry, that was a... Wait, what? Wait, what are you talking about? Yeah, no, Ash is my favorite in this movie. Uh, Next, uh, Pedro. In terms of characters, I guess like I guess by default I would have to pick either Tonio and or, or Alice because they're the closest thing this movie has to a fully fleshed out character arc. Um, I guess I'll go with Alice because Tonio not not so much not because I dislike Tonio but because Tonio spends most of the movie just explaining things. So he doesn't really have any major character moments outside of that one moment where he saves Alice. So I guess I'll go with Alice because, I mean, what other choices do I even have? I'll go with Alice. I'll go mm -hmm. next. Uh, easily to me, Palkia and Dialga. For the same reason I pick Rayquaza. I'm a sucker for Kaiju fights, uh, and this movie delivers uh, 
with the, the scope and the disaster that they cause and how the humans are tangled. Particularly worth noting is the sequence of, with the Hortel balloon towards the end, where it showcases how powerless Ash and the others are in confronting these titans, basically getting tangled into their bickering. That's pretty, it's pretty cool to me. Next. Oh, man, oh, man. it's going to be really interesting when we get to the Hoopa movie. That's the one I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, it's funny because that considers me the worst in the fan base. <laughs> really? It can't be worse than forever. Or heroes. Go on, Dejo. Uh, Shira, you wanna go next? Uh, for best character. I don't know. Alicia, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Pikachu, Dawn. Dawn for being made of steel, or maybe Otonio for... Being a nice guy, I guess. <laughs> There's a Baniri. You want to pick that? Mm. It's cute. That's true, but no. Um, Antonio, I guess. For I couldn't think of his name. Sorry, this movie is... Nobody really stuck with me, but yeah, just... You know what? Being a decent human being is the most you can get out of this. So, you know, Antonio. Yeah, that's... <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Uh, okay, Max. I'll go with Dawn. Because there's no need to worry. And because she's made of steel. <laughs> Alright, now we go to worst scene. <laughs> okay, I, I know exactly what to pick for this, so... Same. Okay, you know what? Let's go work out for a rule. <laughs> I'm gonna put a rule here. Nobody chooses the licky-licky-looking no, Jesse know, scene. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not the one I have. But that's mind. the one I was gonna pick. Okay, fine, Pedro. You can pick that one. <laughs> but um, to me, honestly, it's the scene where Ash and Dawn basically gets dragged out of the hot air balloon. Why? Because that was the moment I realized Ash and Dawn were the, 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 the one saving the day and not Alice. That shit kind of frustrated me, not gonna lie. As for my least favorite scene, that was the blatant filler scene with just the Pokemon playing around and getting into a fight. Like, I was like... This belongs in one of those Pikachu shorts, which, admittedly, we have not covered in a while, but regardless, this belongs, this belongs more in a Pikachu short, not in the movie. If you couldn't fill out the time here, just have them come to the garden, maybe have a song montage or something like uh, Pokemon Destiny Deoxys had, but otherwise, get to the point with Darkrai. Like, I felt like that scene just wasted time. Shiroi? We're seeing... Hmm. The first appearance of what's his face? Alberto, yeah. Alberto. Alberto. Yeah. Sure. Well, a terrible first impression from well, a character okay. that's not even supposed to be a villain. Okay, how about this, Shira? You yeah. and I. All right, how like, about. Like, fuck off. Okay, it's like, I've known you for two seconds. I want to kill you. Okay, so basically, how about this, Shira? Here, I think me and Shira are going to combine both our picks into one. Alberto, in general, because Shira will go with her instant introduction. I'll go with him as a licky, licky, licking. Uh, the uh, Jesse and it's those that, are uh, different scenes, so yeah, you can pick that. So me and Shiroi basically are dumping on Alberto right now via our <laughs> worst scenes picks. There you go. Okay. Uh, least favorite scene. Dark Cry, so called death, maybe. No, no, that's that's, that's stupid. I mean, to though. give him credit, that scene was well done. I mean, the issue is he came back. Granted. Look, I don't even mind that Dark Rise survived. What I do mind is just how abrupt and sudden his reappearance and then the following end of the movie is. Like, we don't even get a scene of the heroes properly making nice with him. It's just, hey, I'm alive. He which might, I'm guessing he'll show up it's in like the a, trilogy as well. It's like they ran out of time, which again begs the question, why did you throw in that stupid uh, Pikachu short style filler scene that has nothing to do with anything? Uh... Uh, when dang it, what's the what's the the guy with glasses name? Tonio. 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 When he was asleep, I woke up and uh, then Alice drops him. Yeah, that was dickish. Yeah, because that scene literally did not contribute anything. Like again, I thought it was going. Oh yeah, he does also have that weird line where he says, "I wish I could get nightmares." Like I thought, wait, is that supposed to be foreshadowing? Like he's immortal or something, or he's cursed? Like he can't. Have a proper sleep? Nope. 
never came back. Oh my what God. we learned from this movie is that um, if a girl is Sundari for you, she might give you a concussion. Yeah, oh my yeah God. we all oh, know, Misty. Oh, oh my God, Tony, are you okay? Oh, you are okay. Well, well, no shit. Well, no, <laughs> well, no you're not okay. <laughs> I, and here I fought. And here I thought you were not okay. I mean, just because you were on the floor. <laughs> okay, so best scene. I guess I'll have to go first. Ask on Palky an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'll admit, that's like, fair. You know, it's it's stupid, but it's the kind of stupid that's also awesome because mm. yeah, no, Palky and Diago were acting the fools, so Ash and Don had every right to call them out. Mm -hmm. I have something that he wasn't mentioning the recap, and I think it's worth mentioning here because, again, best being for scene for me. During the climax, um, one of the times we cut back to Brock, Alke uh, is using a Draco Meteor move, sorry, not the Alga, the Draco Meteor move, and out of fucking nowhere, Brock's Krogan parries one of the Meteor one hand, Metal Gear Rising style, and sends it back. <laughs> I had a feeling you were gonna mention that, even, cause holy even cow. Vox, even Vox needs to wait for a moment to take a look and like, wow, you're great, Krogan. <laughs> I guess it's to show that Krogan has a purpose outside of cock-blocking Brock. That, that Although... Alone, that alone gives an extra point to the movie for me. Alright, for, uh, next for favorite scene. I guess my favorite scene was actually the bit where, you know, Ash and Company do, you know, reconcile with Darkrai in that regard. Again, since it's the culmination of Ash's arc in the movie here, and there, and despite Darkrai not actually saying anything back to them, he does show some signs that he's fine with them. That wasn't my issue with the scene. My issue with the scene is that we never really get any big, deep character moments with him, after he has finally made nice with them. Which, again, maybe is something the trilogy will do. I don't know. I can just only judge this movie on its own. But yeah, no, that's my best scene in this movie. Hmm. I guess I'll go... I guess by by lack of any other options, like I'll go with the flashback scene of uh, between uh, Alicia and... Um, Dark Rai. I mean, I don't really have any. I don't really have any scenes that I have a particular reason to like. So I can just default by a scene that, at the very least, was uh, uh, d done for the sake of character development, even though it was incredibly brief and ineffectual. Yeah, that's it, basically. <laughs> well, Pedro picked what I was going to pick, so. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, you picked the one I was going to pick earlier, so. It Fair, seems you two but... are psychically linked. I mean, those scenes are actually really nice. It's a shame there wasn't more to that in the actual movie. Uh, hmm. This movie is so middle of the road for me for the most part. I know, right? It's, like, no, it's, right? it's hard to pick a best scene in this movie. Uh, can I, I guess pick a best scene for you? Uh, sure. Uh, how about Brock's reaction to seeing Alice up, pro up get reject uh, reject at uh, Gaston on, and then she says she likes Antonia. Oh yeah, there's a good I one. I mean, I mean that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure, I'll go with that. And then the twist is that she actually does like Tonio, but Tonio thought it was just a joke when Alberta suggested, "Ah, your sense of humor." Yeah, sure. It was a funny joke, I guess. There we go. So now it's time for the final thoughts. Tio, you go first. Sure. I'll be quick anyway. Um, despite its flaws, mostly stem to carelessness in those plot holes, as in people forgetting stuff like the fact that Dark Ray could explain things out, but VT really doesn't. Um, I really actually enjoyed this movie, to be honest especially compared to the previous one, because well, the biggest factor to me is that this remembers to be a Pokemon movie first and foremost, rather than being like a character introspection or an adventure, an epic adventure or anything. The Pokemon are still are now at the front and center, rather than being either just the MacGuffin or an element of background at best. 
you know, and there's actual Pokemon fighting of all kind. Sure, Ash, Ash manages to Ash manages to save the day once again, from some compared to someone who actually had all the rights to do it. But at the very least, he doesn't do it alone this time, and he doesn't gain a superpower this time around. So I can live with that. Um, honestly, I I, I like the, the bigger scope again, reflecting the fact that the legendary in this case are literal gods, um, and humans and Pokemon can only do so much to stand them against them. I like to see how the others are handled, like Giratina and Arceus, uh, but again, I'll keep my expectations low. For this one, I was gonna give it a 6 uh, for, you know, just the bare minimum sufficiency, but like I said, that scene with Krogan gives it an extra point, uh, so 7 to me. Wow, interesting. I think you're the most positive one out of all of us here. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a maverick. Next. Yep. Pedro. Uh, okay, so here's the basic gist of it. Like I've said, like Jova and me have said before, this is a movie that has good ideas, but it doesn't have the le- le- layering tissue to connect these things into a coherent plot. Uh, as far as this movie is concerned, because remember, as, uh, it took up. Uh, it's not like the three movies came out simultaneously. As far as we can tell, watching this movie. Uh, Palk and Diago are just plot devices that are just finding because, you know, reasons. And and the, the what little character arcs there are in this movie it are very shallow and poor and not developed at all. Um, like Darkrai and Alicia apparently became friends. Okay, are you actually going to show a bit more of that? Maybe develop Darkrai's character a bit more so we can actually care about him at the end. No? In uh, again, it's uh, again like uh, like like that clip that I love I guess, to say. What kind of la- one thing led to another? Blah blah blah. What kind of lazy writing is that? Isn't it your job as the writer to tell me how this led to that? <laughs> um, same thing here. Uh, Tonyo and Alice's romance is incredibly superficial in the way it's executed because. They do that misunderstanding thing, which could have been a good basis for a for a nice little romantic subplot where they talk about oh, but no, we don't do anything. The fact that Tonio is not the one that saved her barely factors into this. Like, it's mostly just Tonio saying, "You know, Alice, turns out I wasn't the one that saved you." And Alice's reaction amounts to a little more than a "Ah, uh, okay then," and then and then the movie just basically forgets all about that. So it's. So it, it, gee, like uh, again, this entire movie feels so undercooked that it's just like, uh, like I said, like kaiju fights are not really enough for me. If I wanted to watch kaiju fights, I'd watch a Godzilla movie. Those movies are better at that shit. Like it's, it doesn't. What's your score? Yeah, like let me just finish. It's not. Uh, yeah, what is it, what is here of, of possible substance is not fleshed out. What is here is basically just a not to mention a lot of elements from first movie and second movies that are executed worse than in those movies so that also kind of makes it a kind of a playing a problem so for my score i'll no i, I can't give it a, a five because jirashi was still better than this jirashi had a much better coherent plot so i'm gonna have to give it like a four joe you want to go next <clears throat> i will say this about this this movie was fine I've had a lot of critiques to give it, but no, at the end of the day, it was fine, you know, I mean, it doesn't necessarily do anything egregiously bad. That being said, there are quite a few plot holes here which make this a noticeable downstep from Pokemon Ranger Temple of the Sea. Like, it doesn't feel as tightly knit together, and again, the animation feels kind of weaker for me. Now, the CGI might be handled a bit better, me personally, I liked the CGI in uh, Pokemon Ranger Temple of the Sea, but I won't deny Tio does raise a point that at the very least the CGI is handled a bit better in this one, but again, the animation as a whole feels weaker for me. The filler moments are noticeably distracting here, and again, no, like this really feels like not quite an idiot plot, but a very contrived plot in that regard here and there. Now, the cool scenes are cool, and yes, Seeing Ash literally tell a god off to the point where that god has to go, Oh crap, I messed up, let me actually fix this, 
is cool. Like, it shows how far our King of the Sea has come. So, good on him. And again, Ash did get a pretty good arc in this one. So, it balances out. That being said, the fact that I can say that Pokemon The Power of One did things better than this movie does show we have a bit of an issue here. That said, I do feel that things even out a bit more here and there. Whereas Power of the One had more powerful scenes and song, I'd argue, and better reasoning, this one does kind of at least succeed in having a better supporting cast than Power of One did, and some better writing here and there. Again, I feel like the two even out. That's why I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. It's quite a step down from Tokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea. But at the end of the day, I feel like it's a fine enough movie, you know. I would even argue you would not feel like you wasted your money if you saw this for a theater experience. It does feel like it does have the weight of a theater about here and there. That said, it still is nowhere near as good as Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea. And again, when you compare it to a much better movie that was literally the last movie, it does become jarring. Still, though, 6 out of 10. Okay. okay, sure. Um, yeah, it's kind of better than The Power of One because stuff happens, but a lot of that stuff isn't really interesting. Um, but the character moments aren't really that... They, they want you to care, but I don't. Uh, let's see, the flashback stuff was really cute, and again, like I said, it would have been nice if... That whole thing was, you know, a bit more involved with everything that's going on, but apparently a lot of these characters don't carry over to movies two and three of this trilogy, so that's pretty disappointing. No, that, that's the thing, sure. I can tell you right now, aside from Palkia and Dialga, there's not really common characters. Well, aside from, of course, Ash and his group, of course. So. Yeah, it's, it's weird. And um, knowing the reason that uh, these two are doing what they're doing, I don't know why it would need like i don't know why they would need free movies for that just do it in one i i don't really get it i when i i only like it slightly better than power of one there are moments in here but they're just like split seconds you know the occasional funny joke and whatever for score i am going to change the score of power of one Really? Oh boy. Yeah, because I looked at it and I thought, okay, this is not as low as it should be. And um, <laughs> Really? I have yeah. a picture appropriate for you, but you would wow. probably hate me for the rest of your life. Because it was a five, I'm bumping it to a three. This, wow. this, movie, right, is, out this, the image. Movie, this movie is getting a four. Well, to me, well, you're right. To me, it, it, the music and the animation at the very least elevated because the music and animation in that movie are much better than this one. I will say that. So See, you're I think the movie. I think, yeah, I'm giving this a four because I, th like I said, I think the music is just it's some of it is just not appropriate for what's going on. That's why the music might be good, but like some of it just doesn't work where it's placed. And yeah, like I can't. I can't say, like, I'm not going to give this movie a six. Like, I looked at my score for Power of One, so it was a five, and it was like, I'm not giving this a six. So Power of One, I need to kick that down a little bit. <laughs> so, I, mean, I know we're going to have the opportunity to change all our scores, like, towards the end of this marathon of ours. But, um, yeah, I thought, I'm, I'm going to do that one right now. <laughs> so. I'm so dead. I'm <laughs> So, Dads, I'm guessing that uh, oh, no, Power of funny, One is. On, uh, I'm guessing that Power of One is pretty beloved to you, Dads. No, not no, not really. I'm, I'm just me. I'm just just be glad that he's not counting my scores because he didn't want to think of Power of One. I forgot. All what right, so uh, I'm gonna give this movie a zero yet. because honestly, I thought this was pretty boring. Nah, I'm just um, this movie's boring. There's a, there's neat ideas here, but it just needed to be fleshed out a lot. I like like. Do you think this movie would have been better if Ash, Don, and Brock weren't in this, and it just focused on those characters they introduced, just well, to pace things better? No, no, uh, not necessarily. Really, we would have had a lot of the similar problems. Darkrai does not communicate yeah. well. 
Town hates them. It's so here's what they needed to Beauty and the Beast. Here's what they needed to do, Dedge. First off, remove that stupid scene of the Pokemon bumbling around that has nothing to do with it. That time would be better spent uh, fleshing out the relationship between Tonio and Alice. Second, uh, do what uh, we've talked about before. Do that thing where do a thing where Darkrai cannot speak. Instead, he has to use dream imagery to try to explain this to them. That would fix so many problems in this movie. See, it's just the, it's the creative choices that are lazy. Like you said, Danger, you, you, you suggest this in here would have worked better in the previous movie, not in this one. Well, well, well. That that was that was what the original intent was. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. So, what's your score ultimately, Dej? I I don't know because I'm really struggling between a f and a five because there's like because cause like I'm looking at the scores I gave it. I I, I gave other movies like. You know, I'll I like it I've... better than Mastermind Mirage. Like it's not. I like it better than Heroes, which is which isn't saying much. Do you like it better than Forever? Uh, honestly, I like Forever. I'm the only one that actually liked Forever. Well, there you go. Then in that okay, case, I then. guess when I, like so. When I, I, but when it comes, let me guess. When Forever, you prefer how the English dub handled things regarding how you know the relationship between Ash and Oak, essentially. Uh, I think I liked Forever because it was on a smaller scale. This one is, oh snap, we're we going to die if we don't do anything. I mean, Pokemon Forever literally tries to tout Celebi as the world's most powerful Pokemon, so I'm ooh, not sure ooh, about it going forest. small on scale. Well, to be fair, I mean, well, this whole thing is technically confined to just one town instead of being but a the potential world threat. And they just got lucky because, again, these are deities where they can do whatever the fuck they want with the yeah. world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But hey, when a kid calls them out as stupid, they have no choice but to it, take back the Yeah, and it's like, there are, the humor in this is genuinely funny. Yeah, as I mentioned, I generally like the comedy in this movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, again, the thing that drags this movie down is just... It does not have the good points connecting scenes. And also, again, the aforementioned legendary Darkrai is not as compelling a character as they want us to think he is. Again, like, well... Yeah, when, 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 let me put it like this. When the main problem with your movie is, you know, the main centerpiece of it, for as good as everything else in the movie is going to be... Your main centerpiece is kind of rotten at the core, and that more often than not presents a problem. I can't, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think Pokemon Journeys did a better job at handling Darkrai than this movie. Lore-wise, Darkrai should be connected to uh, Cresselia. In fact, actually, there's a scene, there's a scene we even talk about where they sell merchandise in the city but there is the item connected to Cresselia. The Luna Wing. You, you, you oh, think it would be? You think it would be foreshadowing, but nope. Nope, it's just thrown in there because <laughs> it, 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 it's it's kind of works just like that that thing in movie six where where May buys that thing. They keep referencing, but then the Chekhov's gun doesn't shoot, so I have no idea why the fuck was in the movie. Again, that scene where Dawn buys that thing in the shop also went, goes nowhere. It literally happens, and the movie never acknowledges it ever again because. Those does Crusader show up in any of the other two movies tied to Gen 4? Nope. Nope. Wow. <laughs> I have no fucking clue why that scene was even in there. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Luna Wing thing is just... Uh, it, it, it's brought back in an episode just to be like, yes, this movie did happen. That's it. Oh. Uh, That's well, nice when they do that, I guess. It is, yeah. but at the same time, from the perspective of the movie itself, it feels like incredibly ineffectual use of screen time. <laughs> All right. Are we so, done? Jack, I guess, your uh, score? Uh, I'll, I'll give it a five. Okay. Okay. Honestly, it, it, you know... It needs another rewatch from me. I'm kind of surprised, honestly. I mean, I thought you were going to like... I thought you were going to give this movie a higher score than I did. Honestly, yeah, I thought I, I was told like this one's the best of the DP movies. I'm um, just like, oh. uh, 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 oh. Oh, 
okay, look, like I said, I'll stick with my score for six because this one seemed fine. Like, again, it didn't necessarily have all that stuff amazing about it, but it, 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 it wasn't like... Okay, it didn't get to the point of something like Heroes, where Heroes is definitely not the worst, but it sure ain't the best either, hence why I gave Heroes a five. Like... Darkrai at least has genuinely good moments. What's Heroes remembered for most? The time when Ash got a Pokemon, a legendary Pokemon, to fall in love with him. Honestly, if I were to remember that movie for anything, I would have rather have it be that Ash was able to tank moves that down to legendary, but he just shook it off like a champ. Which again does lead me to wonder, are humans just made of sterner stuff than Pokemon in the world? All right. Are we done? Yes. Yeah. So, no, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, dark... we still have to do the total. Oh, so, with our total scores of the four hosts, uh, we gave it a 19. That's t We dropped 10 mm. points compared to Temple of the Sea. Oof. Mm -hmm. uh, but hey, it still scored more than Pokemon Forever. What are, the, yeah, what right, are our new that... rankings now after the score edits? Oh, uh, God. Yeah, yeah, let's see. We gave Power of 121. Uh, do, do you want to rank Power of 1 higher than Master Mario Barrage? Yes. Okay. Like, I mean... Okay, they're, they're both technically 21. That being said... The only reason I gave Mastermind and Mirage a 6 was because for the type of movie it was, you know, being more like, you know, a glorified TV special, it earned that ranking. Remember, whenever I rank these, I'm taking them in the bout of how well they did for their specific type of film. If I were judging Master and Mirage on, like, you know, say, the exact same grading scale I am with the cinematic movies, it would have been way lower. Ditto, one, one more Jova just said. So yeah, no, Power of One technically does get a ranking above that, despite them being tied. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's, that's fair. Still, I'm sorry that you had to see your baby Power of One get downed like that, Dedge. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> kind of got, okay, I, I, this is generally on me as fault, but uh, I kind of got blindside replaced by it because when Shiri was kind of hyping up, I mistook it, but she was going to raise the score of power one, not down. <laughs> also, I Imagine. need to repeat, I, I like this movie more than two. That's not fine. three. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, All right. Like okay, I mean, again, so, uh, it's always a rare treat when we see Shirei actually be harsher than Pedro at one of these. I think the only other time we saw that happen was with Pokemon Heroes, where she gave that thing a one, while Pedro gave it a four. Well, well, well you talking about Power of One specifically, about Shirei being harsher than no, 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 Pokemon movie? Hero. I'm talking about Pokemon Heroes. Like that's the only other time I think we've seen Shiroi give a harsher score on these. Yeah, than yeah. You. Well, I'm not as bothered by that kind of stuff uh, as much. As for po Power of One, the reason I gave it a five is because the animation is, yeah, probably okay. It's either that or Lucario movie, like one of those two. Like, uh, but the the animation in Pokemon Forever, sorry, Pokemon Power of One is actually one of the best animations. In the, oh, yeah. in the franchise and the score uh, is absolutely fantastic so that's the only reason it doesn't get a lower grade because uh, the aesthetic elements really carry that bloody thing <laughs> I absolutely get why you gave it that score again it's just so rare that we see Shirei be harsher to a film than you and I get in regards and, to and I, yeah, and I guess Shirei is, I, I'm guessing Shirei you didn't particularly love the score and, and animation of the second movie maybe or maybe they're, they're they're good but not like good enough to raise the the um, the the great from free the movie is so boring well fair <laughs> all right so looking at the rankings just want just one more time in in dead last legend of thunder or er, then digimon the movie then pokemon heroes 
we, we should probably change that in hindsight. That and Celebi, Voice of the Forest, Rise of Darkrai, our newcomer at 19 points. On top well, of don't it, look at me in regards to heroes. I gave it a five. Like I gave the highest score out of anyone for that movie. Uh, Matt, Mass Mario Mirage Pokemon it, it, and Power of One are tied at the, for 21. Team Go Getters Get Out of the Gate, which I forgot to include, is eighth place. Jirachi Wishmaker, then Mewtwo Returns, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Destiny Deoxys, Temple of the Sea at third place, second place Spell of the Unknown, and at absolute number one, Lucario at the Mystery of Mew at 40. Obviously. So where does these be uh, so- All right, Shira, I wrote something for you, so... Yes. Yeah. Senna is off to a rocky start. Continuing our trilogy, we now fight... We now befriend some random grassmon named Shaman. Uh, Plus, Satan is there too, I guess. Tune in oh next time boy. for Pokemon Garatina and Skyward. Oh boy, the Pokemon Devil! I, no, I'm not kidding. I have never seen a I have never seen a Pokemon have a more ironic basic description. <laughs> <laughs> Which one, Garatina or Shaman? Shaman, the Pokemon of gratitude. Let's just say his personality doesn't match that description. <laughs> I'll see you next time. See ya. See ya. I'm hungry.